Hey everyone, I'm Paul. In this video, we're going to show you how we created our DIY vacuum table for our Avid CNC using three sheets of MDF, a whole bunch of two inch ABS piping, and a vacuum pump. So let's get right into it. So here we go. The very first sheet, this is a piece of three quarter inch MDF. And we're making this a little unique because we mostly use our CNC to surface big slabs. So we need this vacuum table to be removable. So we decided that we're going to use these aluminum angle brackets, which I actually bought like three years ago when I got the CNC and never used. So it comes in handy, folks. You got you to hoard the things. Don't get rid of them. We decided to pre-drill with a small little bit at the drill press and then uh, basically open up the hole to be able to fit the insert. Drill press is definitely the best way to do it if you got multiples to do. We decided to go with four angle brackets on both sides. Next up, we're just giving it a little bit of a chamfer. We're going to be handling this table, so we just didn't want to have any sharp burrs, anything like that. For the hardware, we're using Rampatech threaded inserts as well as bolts which the inserts require a 10 millimeter drill bit and then very easily they thread in using an Allen key. We love these inserts compared to the standard Home Depot version because they have three threads so they virtually are guaranteed to go in straight, they're self-aligning and they're actually machined inserts so they are much stronger holding power as well as longevity. Oh, what a good fit. So you can see here we got the angle bracket, we got our insert, and we're just making sure everything lines up, looking good. Next up, we're just very lightly threading in all the bolts, laying everything out, making sure we're happy with what we got going on. And so far, so good, we're looking good. With the MDF, we're gonna be gluing two three quarter inch sheets together and uh, you got a lot of glue surface to go over, so it's very important. I'd probably use a paint roller. I would not recommend a little two inch one that we used because we were really running around uh, thinking, oh boy, uh, we should have used a bigger paint roller. So use a big paint roller if you're gonna be doing this to spread the glue, really speeds things up. Now, I was working here with Andy, so we were very easily able to drop the sheet on, but if you're working by yourself, it's smart to stick a couple sticks underneath it put the sheet on there and then pull the sticks out. On the center of the sheet, we temporarily screwed them together uh, to act as clamps to get a nice tight fit. And then around the entire outside perimeter, we decided to add a bunch of F clamps for that added glue squeeze out. And of course, time for lunch. Let the glue set up. You wanna wait at least an hour before you take these clamps off. Now with the two sheets on there, we're able to add the threaded inserts and the bolts to the side of the vacuum table. This is how it will attach to our CNC. So we're gonna keep those angle brackets mounted to the table, but we'll be removing the bolt from the table to remove the vacuum table. Next up, we need to CNC the grid and we use Vetric Aspire. It's a very nice program. You're able to fully see a 3D rendering of exactly what you're gonna be CNCing. So this is what we're after. We're using a half inch down spiral bit. And step one, we decided to machine out the uh, holes. We decided to use two inch thick black ABS piping for all the uh, vacuum tube piping. You can just get it at Home Depot or any type of hardware store. Got to test the fit, of course. Ooh, yeah, look at that, perfect. That's what we want, folks. So these are the holes for all the piping. We're gonna have two inlets for each zone. And now we're gonna start cutting out the actual grid pattern. Again, we're still using that half inch spiral bit. And of course the CNC is uh, taking care of all the actual hard work. And I'm super impressed with the Avid CNC, very accurate, did exactly what we needed to do. And having that 3D rendering already on the computer, you know what the outcome of your program is going to be. So it's kind of a, a set it and forget it kind of thing, which is really, really nice. Now, we don't do this too often, so uh, we pretty much stood around and we did watch it the whole time because it's pretty cool watching a robot that you just, you're telling what to do to, to make your design. 
So from there, look at that, the grid is done. This is gonna allow airflow to go out to each zone nice and even. Now from here, we're making the table perfectly flat to the CNC. So we're using a surfacing bit. This is the Amana RC2252. Uh, and we just took a very light skim coat across the entire top of this piece. Now we're adding in the, um, I guess these would be called uh, the couplings, the couplers. What do we call these things, folks? You can let us know. But basically the two inch ABS will fit into these pieces. So these will stay attached to the vacuum bed the entire time, even after we remove the table from the CNC. And we're just using Acfix uh, spray adhesive. Um, it's a, it's a uh, CA glue. And now we flip the table over and we can do all of our piping, do some measuring. We didn't have a plan for the piping, we just kind of knew what we needed for connectors, but we didn't have any measurements for the lengths of any of the tubes, so we kind of just figured that out, out as we went, and we cut all the tubes using our miter saw, worked really, really well. At this point, we haven't glued anything together because we're going to want to test it, and we bought these two-inch ball valves to be able to turn off each zone, so we're going to have four of these ball valves hooking up to our vacuum pump that you see here, which is a uh, four kilowatt unit, so just over five horsepowers. And I think we did a good job, if I must say so myself. Looks fairly professional. Nice and clean, we got the four zones, we can turn them on and off. So from here, the third piece of MDF is actually an ultra light piece of MDF. It's also three quarters of an inch. But this is where it's very, very important. You need to skim off the shiny surface because the vacuum will not pull through that shiny surface. So step one, we remove the shiny surface from the one side. We then apply glue to the entire top side of the grid. Very important, we are not gluing the underside of the next sheet. The glue will block the airflow. Only apply glue on the grid. From here, we're actually able to turn on the vacuum pump itself to pull the sheet down and uh, it worked really, really well. We're just putting off another sheet of wood. I guess this is a piece of HDPE, a piece of plastic, which will help suction down that sheet to the other sheets, making a nice, nice glue bond. Now we're surfacing the very top side of it, taking off that shiny surface again to let the air flow through, but also to uh, create the table perfectly flat to RCNC. And uh, I've seen this done before many, many times, people drawing with a pen or a marker using the spindle. I had never actually done it, and I thought, you know what, this is the perfect time to try it. I decided to lay out our zones using a Sharpie. All right, with the vacuum bed fully fabricated, we're going to go ahead, we're going to test it out. Uh, spoiler alert, we already did it, <laughs> and it works. But here's our process for creating this. This is actually a table base that's going through our shop right now. Justin by hand, drew a wooden template. We then took that hand-drawn wood template, digitized it using the Logic Trace board, which we featured on our Tool Tuesday. You can check that out. So we took that DXF file, we put it into Vetric Aspire. We knew we needed a full height of 28 inches, ground to the top of this, and we knew we wanted these parallel. So this is flat to the ground and flat to the tabletop. So in the program, we created a box that was 28 inches tall, we placed our traced DXF file in that box, cleaned up just the two top edges. Everything else was mint right off the, right off the logic trace tracing board. And then from there, we went to the CNC. We installed our half inch spiral bit. It is a down cut and uh, put our blank on here and we flicked on the vacuum pump and we cut out our pieces.
Okay, so success, we've cut out our first part. I'm gonna swap out the blank and we're gonna cut the second leg and we're gonna see how this half lap joint fits together. So we got the vacuum pump turned back on. You can see how nicely I'm pushing right on that. I'm pushing, this is a sheet that we're using just to cover up some of the zone. We have the one zone open. What's interesting is you can see how I can lift it just like that. But once it's down, I can't give it a push at all. Pretty neat. Okay, the second part is out. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test fit this half lap joint. Oh, it's so close. Oh yeah. So we're a little tight, you can see here. So we'll have to make the half lap joint just a little bit bigger. But, uh, but pretty darn tootin' good. Pretty darn tootin' good. So that's it, that's the end of this video. This is a DIY vacuum table. Uh, you can use it on any CNC, obviously. We have it on our Avid CNC and we're using a four horsepower vacuum pump. Just got it off online classifieds. Everything else was purchased at Home Depot. All the plumbing parts as well as the uh, MDF. Although we did get the ultralight MDF through one of our suppliers. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you learned something. We are super, super excited. I've wanted to have a vacuum table ever since I got my CNC. I think it opens up so many possibilities. So stay tuned. We're gonna be really putting it to use. We're going to be carving chair seats with it, as well as making a lot more templates. Oh, and by the way, we will have these templates for sale in a digital form that you can print yourself, um, a paper form that we'll mail to you, as well as a CNC or laser cut plywood templates that we'll also mail to you, and you can create this same table base. So also stay tuned to my Instagram channel, at Canadian Woodworks. That's especially where we stay up to date on the daily going-ons inside the wood shop here. And of course, as always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like this video, and share it on Facebook. Spread it around. It's one thing you can do to help support us and help build our channel. We really, really appreciate it. Make it a great one, everyone.